Today in the Beloved Plant channel we'll talk about succulents that do well indoors. Some of you have looked me up and asked about how to avoid plants getting stretched like this. It could have several reasons but the main reason is the lack of the right amount of light. If you live in a home without enough exposure to direct sunlight you just have to find the right succulent option. So let me present you with options of succulents that do well indoors and won't get as easily stretched. Since I will be presenting dozens of succulents, I will focus mostly on the light needs for each variety, all of the plants that you will see like well-drained soil, and they all like water. I don't keep mine thirsty. I'll start with the succulents that need least light and move to the ones that would need a bit more direct light. Hawartia fasciata, in my opinion, is one of the best succulents you could ever have in the house. Um, do you see here that it's somewhat brown? That's because it was way too close to the window and it got some direct sunlight and not even that many hours. So this plant will do super well somewhat uh, away from the window. I know many people who like succulents as a centerpiece on a table, so this could be a good option. It does need light though, so that you will see this lighter green new growth popping out. Make sure it's exposed to light at least once a week if it's too far from the window. I will not dare pronouncing this name but this variety also does super well inside the house. Funny fact that I always find leaves broken in the stores. I think people want to test it out, see if it's made of plastic. It's real folks. This succulent is also super sensitive to direct sunlight which is great news if you want it indoors. It does get pretty brownish if it gets exposed to sunlight. This one belongs to the aloe vera family. They tend to need less light. It is so geometrical, just so beautiful. I just love staring at it. And this one in particular, I leave it about 100 centimeters, so a meter away from my window. It never complains. Here's another aloe. It was outside in the sun, no doubt about it. That's why it looks so brown. But I, I just love it. It looks colorful. I don't know. Um, some people may think it's burnt or sick. It's not. It's just being exposed to sun. That's all. And I have one that is kind of in the shadow there out there in my back garden, which I'm showing to you just so you have an idea of what it would look like if you keep it indoors. All right, I'm about to present to you another category of succulents. They all tolerate lower light, but they do prefer more exposure to light. So if you have them in your house, it needs to be closer to the window, right? I'll scan through these. They all kind of have the same light needs. By the way, this beauty is known as the string of pearls. These are string of nickels. They also thrive in half shaded environments. And so do the string of dolphins. I just love how delicate these plants are. This is one of the easiest aloes that I have in the house. Sometimes I just forget it's there and it goes for a long time with no water. Um, here it is actually now, two years after, much longer. It's kind of a hanging plant now. In the same original pot where I had the first aloe, I had this aloe blizzard. It's really hard to find here in Ireland, so I end up getting this one even though it came with some broken leaves. It also gets somewhat brown if exposed to direct sunlight. Behind the aloes here there's a gasteria. This is it. That's the plant. It just grows a lot quicker than the aloe so I ended up having to separate it. Also very sensitive to light and this is another type of gasteria that you'll easily find in Ireland. This is a string of turtles, not exactly a succulent, but it is a succulent plant. It will accumulate water in its leaves and the print on its leaves will remind you of little turtles. Here's one more string that you could have indoors. This is a string of hearts. You can see the white border in this one. It's because it's variegated. It's more common to find the other version that I'll show you as well. Um, they have basically the same care needs. This is a succulent plant, believe it or not. Um, their leaves get very chunky if you give it the right amount of water. And they are not very fussy about direct sunshine either. Ripsalis. I have a bit of a collection of this plant at home, also known as mistletoe cacti. It does super well indoors. 
This blue succulent called Senecio loves light, just not direct sunlight. It gets burned quite easily. This plant creates a lot of contrast with everything else that I've showed you because of its color and also its height. It's a bit taller. This is my dinner plate Aeonium. It just doesn't look like a dinner plate right now because it has growth coming out of the middle, but it's a flat succulent, very beautiful, also sensitive to direct sunlight, does well in the house. And if it's outside, just beware of slugs that could be hiding in the middle of the plant. This Crassula gets quite green in the house and somewhat brown if exposed to sun. This other type of Crassula will grow anywhere. What's the contrary of fussy? It's this plant. <laughs> Here it is, um, after receiving direct sunlight, it gets purpley, really beautiful. This type of Haworthia is one of my dearest. It's just so unique with these translucent tips that it has. It does well in half shade, but it does need a lot of light. Because of its translucent tips, it has less chlorophyll, so it needs more indirect sunlight. It does get a bit brown if it's exposed to direct sun. And you can see here some pups coming out. This succulent in particular is hard to uh, reproduce from the leaves. So I prefer to let these grow out and then make new pots out of it. I have this sedum inside the house as a hanging plant and it's kind of red because um, in the window where it is it received a lot of direct sunlight but here in my garden you can see it um, in the shade it's very green it's almost a jack of all trades it will do well anywhere really and here's the same type but it's a mini one so the leaves are a bit smaller this one uh, curiously enough doesn't do so well with direct sunlight it does well in the house in general, crassulas do well indoors. Uh, here's a, a, a few varieties. The most common one to find is the crassula perforata. It gets so beautiful in direct sun. Crassula ovata golum. I love it. It just looks like something from under the sea. The same thing with this one. Um, they get pretty colorful with direct sunlight, but do well in the house. Crassula ovata is the most common one that people will insist and put in the middle of the table away from windows it doesn't do great it will do well close to windows and present new growth like this one aloe vera a classic of all classics this plant i, I just find it too beautiful i gave this one a lot of plant food and it's huge right now this plant is very known for its healing properties it promotes wound healing Although I never use it in the skin, I just use it to decorate the house, really. And this is it. I hope you've enjoyed the video um, and that it's helped you find the right succulents for your home.